So just bring up my slide share and I'm just going to Right, if anyone wants to follow along with the transcript, please copy that URL. I'll just put it into the chat, just if you want to have the subtitles and stuff. Um, where is the chat hiding? There it is. Everyone. Or you can just scan that with your QR code. I'll give you 15 seconds and then kick off. So I hope everyone's been having a lovely day. And it's been really interesting some of the the stuff so far on the, like the MEC and the competencies. And it is something that I find that people don't really get competencies and look at how to use competencies in a course. And they go, is one competency an assignment or something like that? But anyway, okay. Moving swiftly along. Moodle competency is a hidden gem. I think it's more like hidden treasure, more than just one gem, by the way, but that's just me. Um, so I have a presentation here, but I've hidden the first two. I will be sharing the slides afterwards. Um, I'm going to start off here. So this is a programming framework that basically does all of these objectives correlated by task. So when they designed this course, they had a whole competency framework. And then each task was correlated against individual competencies. So that explaining there, there was some English related competencies because of their having to explain. But then there was some mathematical and computer based ones because of what they were doing. And the principle I want to get across here is that there is nearly never a correlation between a competency and an activity or a task. They're usually a blend. And that means that you have to get that across in your head and how you approach it. OK, now it is possible, but it's it's very it's it's very um, unusual. And then that first task, then they really describe it quite well. That this is where you have a full program designed by competencies. And they define out the task, and then they look at the standards of learning, and they go through the various ones on maths, um, COM1, and so on. And they go through the ones on um, English as well, and there was more pages than that. But this is just to give you an idea that you have to be incredibly detailed in how you approach competencies. Competencies are used in so many professions around the world, be it medical, but also in sales. One of the other ones which I'll, I'll share in the actual slide deck is around sales training. And I think there's something like 1,200 behaviors that make a good salesperson. That's a lot, isn't it? And especially when you have to grade them all or assess them all. The PSI, which is the pharmacy um, industry here in Ireland, they have a framework which they did a lot of research on. They had six overall domains, and this is how you can go about structuring. So you might have the mapping, we also have structure. And when you get into that, then you would have each area broken down into a competency like practices, patient-centered care, and then you have behaviors inside of that, which basically define how that person, if they are doing all these behaviors all of the time, then they've achieved that competency. And when, when you're looking at rating, you would look at, okay, well, is that person doing it rarely, sometimes, mostly, or consistently? And this is the kind of way that they did it. So one of the tools which they had built in their Moodle site, or we built for them, was this compass activity, where a student down the left-hand side, I know it's all blurry, it's, um, you'll be able to see it better in the slide deck, where it listed out competencies, and a student then would rate their level, and then their workplace assessor or mentor would rate, rate them. And they would do this in multiple phases throughout the year. Because a competency is something that usually develop over time, not just, hey, I've studied, I've got it, woohoo. Um, so this is a, a nice phased acquisition of competencies and demonstration of competencies. And then there was various reports around that. And again, how do you visualize what competencies, what level of completion? And one of the things that we found is that radar-based um, visualizations work really well, where only when, when it's filled out fully that they actually have it completed, but whether it's smaller than that. And then this allowed both mentor and student to be able to visually see how each other are doing. And it was sort of um, interactive that they could click into the different domains. So just want to check, blah, 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 blah. As Mark just says there, by the way, taking the time to map out the competency is time consuming, but it's worth it. Absolutely. Now, what about Moodle? Now, Moodle basically brought out a competency management system that was a bit like the um, 
it was the foundations of how you would then use competencies. So there are some links which I'll share in the slide deck afterwards to the Moodle docs and also the discussion forum on competence, some really interesting stuff going on in there. But this is basically your five steps. Okay, you're going to want to have a framework. Okay, the multiple levels, call it what you want, full descriptions of it. And then you create learning plans and learning plans are subsets of the framework, right? So like if you have over your degree, you're someone's going to go through those 1200 behaviors, for example, for sales. In, in year one, they might only do 300 of them. It's a bit crazy, but it, whatever. So you create a learning plan with all those 300 and then you go into courses, which is the next step, and assign them to the various courses. And then if activities are related to them, you tag them in the activities as well. So you're, make, you're basically having this framework and it's spreading out across all of the different Moodle modules and Moodle courses and Moodle activities. And often you're given a choice of like, when, well, when this is completed an activity, do they complete the um, competency or do they just add evidence? Often you'll just be adding evidence in and then having an assessor go in and check, does all their evidence really add up? Now you might have a big summative exam, which tackles a lot of them, which passes them all automatically. But again, that really depends on your assessment strategy. Um, but then you need to assign these learning plans to students or cohorts, so groups of students at a site level, so you can have them all. And then the student will know what learning plan they're on and where they're going. One of the interesting things is there, so yes, they'll get this automated evidence from doing those activities, but they'll also be able to add evidence. So I'm gonna go through these now. So this is basically the screenshot of a very simple view and um, Mary will um, will probably recognize this as the Moodle school demo site. We can go in and play with all this. So you've got basically just eight competencies. It's a very, very simple one. So I wanted to have the most simple. Um, and that's the basic the framework setup. But then when you're creating a learning plan, you're basically adding in these competencies from that framework. So it's nice step-by-step -step process. And when you're doing it, then it has a various path. And if you've linked it to a course, as you can see here, um, it will show that. So I've already, or they were already done. But then in a course, when you're adding them, so when the course is complete, and I do say complete with inverted commas there, you do want completions higher. Do you just attach evidence? Or are you going to be completing that um, particular competency? And these are really, really key fundamental things that you want to be deciding. But that's how you do it. It's really straightforward. And from a, a student point of view, then um, they need to get added into it. So as an admin, you then have this learning plan and you bulk add either a cohort, lots of students, or individual students one at a time. And you can sort of see here that you're creating learning plans from these templates. So that year one is really a template that you then create an actual learning plan for a user by assigning it to a user. And yes, this is all a bit of a head wrecker sometimes. And when you've done it the first time, I hope you've got a nice bottle of wine, but when you do it the second and third time, you'll only need a glass. So- Just um, a minute left there, Gavin, thanks. That's fine, no problem. And then from the student point of view, they can see their own learning plan where they actually have the sort of competencies listed out, their rating and so forth. Or, and this is one thing I really like about it, um, is the whole student evidence where they can attach a presentation or a qualification that they've done and then tag it into those competencies so that when someone's assessing them, that they can look at it. So, but that's it really. So um, we are gonna be having a full blown workshop at the Moodle Moot, which is happening in May on competencies. So if you wanna come along to that, and that's gonna be much more practical taking Digicomp EDU and really applying it into some courses. But anyway, but there we go. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Rob, for the invite.